I want to quickly talk about my guy, Jussi Smollett. The trial of the century is happening right now. I think there's going to be back-to-back -back trials, actually. There's going to be the Jussi Smollett trial is going to conclude. And then soon after, the Megan Thee Stallion v. Tory Lanez trial should be starting too. So we're going to have a conclusion to both, to, to two very interesting stories that happened in the last two years that kind of, you know, dominate social media and had people debating as to who was telling the truth or not, right? Um, the Jussi Smollett one is super interesting because on paper, it looks like he did lie, right? So the idea behind it also, the the thinking behind it goes, he was going through a lull in his career. Um, he was trying to reinvigorate it somehow by making himself go viral and by obviously making himself a victim and then using that to obviously propel himself to be a, an advocate on activists of some regard. And he plotted his plan with these two hench Nigerian brothers um, to uh, stage an attack as he was leaving a Subway sandwich shop um, somewhere near wherever he was staying in Chicago. And the idea was that they were going to beat him, you know, blood and red and blue, whatever it may be, right? Leave him some bruises, uh, tie a noose around his neck, scream out manga country, run off. And then he was going to use that occasion to then kind of piggyback off the kind of racial tension and political unrest that was going on at the time because Donald Trump was president and basically say, oh, these MAGA guys came and beat me up because I'm a gay black guy in living in flipping America. Cool, right? And at the... Uh, on paper, it doesn't seem like a bad idea, given what we know about victimhood, given what we know about the politics now at the moment, given what we know about people's need to kind of identify with uh, a cause, uh, pe given people's need to be seen as being more than just an actor, whatever it may be. It does seem quite logical. But then obviously, as time has progressed, what has been interesting to me about this whole case has been Justice Smollett's kind of insistence that he's innocent. Like, he has not swayed from his belief that the attack happened it wasn't a hoax and that he is a victim of a hate crime he hasn't swayed from it at all from the beginning to the end he has not swayed one bit even from the cringy performance he did um post the uh, post the assault where he was like oh i'm the gay tupac to him appearing on that tv show interview with that lady he has not really deviated from the fact that he genuinely believes that he was attacked and in a hate crime because donald trump was basically stoking these racial tension fires whatever was going on at the time he genuinely believes that and even in court now at the moment because the court case is happening he has stuck with it which has made me think what if right what if Justice smollett is actually telling the truth what if it actually did happen the way he said it happened what if everything that transpired even though it's all coincidental, which I don't believe in, right? When it comes to entertainers or when it comes to people in the world in general, <coughs> I don't believe in, co I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe in, sorry, in coincidences. I believe things can happen by chance. <coughs> sorry. One of occasions, right? One of instances can happen by chance. But I usually think whatever happens after the fact is definitely someone taking advantage of a chance encounter. For instance, if there are two single people in Hollywood who happen to be spotted at a restaurant together, and then the tabloids go crazy for it. The social media pages go crazy for it. All the stand accounts go crazy for it. I would not, it would not be, uh, it would not be far-fetched to say or to suggest that maybe both agents of these two um, stars decide to sit down and say, you know what? Why don't we hook these guys up and make them have a relationship so that they can boost both of their careers, which is then going to allow us to take more of a percentage as managers. I think probably the same thing happened with, you know, again, bad example, but I think probably the same thing happened with the Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello, right? Most likely, they were spotted together, kind of by chance, or maybe they were in the same vicinity. The fans and the stands went crazy. They looked so cute together. I'm going to go so hot, what a couple, what a couple. And then the label or the management team just leaned into it. So that's not really a coincidence, technically, but they've kind of capitalized on it, which is why I don't believe in it fundamentally. So I think if you're a Hollywood star, like, um, you know, Justice Mullet at that time, maybe, you know, not the biggest Hollywood star, but you're kind of coming up in the ranks, you're an empire, people like you. He did an interview on The Breakfast Club before the whole attack, which I really enjoyed. He came across really well, really funny, clearly a talented actor. His sister's also a really good actor too, right? It comes from a really, um, you know, creative, it looks like a talented group of people. Um, cool, doing his thing it wouldn't be far-fetched to suggest that he maybe he would want to do such a thing, right? It wouldn't be too far-fetched. Um, but his insistence that he's innocent is making me believe that maybe that wasn't a fact. But Jesus, just a quickly, before we go on with this, right? Mate, stress of life definitely tells on your skin, innit? In your face. 
There's no getting away from it. Because look how weathered he looks from this picture, which obviously looks like it's got taken recently, where he's kind of leaving the courtroom, to this picture, which was, I think, at the beginning of the case when he was trying to fight it and come up, you know, be strong or whatnot. He looks very, very weathered. Like, his eyes are already sunken in. His hair looks like it's thinning and graying out. God damn, he's going through it. But yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe Jesse might be innocent. And if he is, he is not going to shut up about it, innit? If he's unbearable now... Imagine how unbearable he's going to be if he's able to prove to everybody that he was actually telling the truth and this was actually an attack that he didn't plan or stage in any way. Anyway, let's go on with the case. Quickly go over the, <coughs> the, the notes. So this guy called Matt Finn on, on Instagram, sorry, on Twitter, sorry, is um, basically documenting the entire court case. His Twitter handle is Matt Finn, F-N-C, all one word, Matt Finn, F-N-C, Matt spell M-A-T-T-F-I-N-N, fnc all one word on twitter follow me he's got a good profile in terms of everything so he basically catalogued just Smollett's um you know interpretation of the events and basically how he's testifying this is the following Joseph Smollett testifies that he and Bola Osendario got private room in a gay bathhouse and did more drugs and made out there was touching hey sounds like a good time to me i don't think this was an aspect that we uh, we ever knew about i think beforehand i think we just all assumed it was a staged hoax thing, but I don't think any of us knew that those guys were maybe involved in some gay sex fun stuff. We didn't know that at all. So that's an interesting development. So that makes it more layered because there was clearly emotions and feelings that got involved with this case too. It wasn't just clearly a point of them. He just hiring out. It wasn't just a case of him hiring the biggest and buffest dudes he could find and then just telling him to beat him up. Obviously, they had some sort of connection, some sort of kind of uh, prior relationship that kind of would make it the case that they would maybe even have the ability to do it in the first place. Um, it continues to <laughs> you gotta love it man this is your yeah, small testifies he would pay bola osandaria for cocaine around 200 dollars, man what what a good time in it when, when when people are paying you for your your kind of uh workout tips in coke that's when you know you're a real degenerate. And he continues on. says, Smollett testifies that Lee Daniels, creator of Empire, told him he was fat. Smollett then was told to lose weight for a music video. This was getting set up. This was setting up Smollett's training for Osandario's meal plans and workout plans. So he's testifying, basically. The only reason why they were in communication was because the rigors of the Hollywood industry was pushing him to the point where he needed to lose weight for these future roles. And his best friend or a guy that he would call a mentor, the guy that was at the center of saying, I believe him. And he was crying on camera and shit. Lee Daniels, the same guy who ran off with flipping Dame Dash's one million until he had to confront him in some sort of church somewhere. He was the guy that basically pressured him into that place. So he's in a roundabout way trying to blame Hollywood and the pressures of the entertainment industry for him being in the situation. It feels like a bit. It feels like. But again, maybe I'm wrong. It continues. It says, Smollett testifies he was at home when the Empire called him um, to tell him and an egregious letter was sent to himself. They were going to call the police. Smollett says he drove to the studio to see himself in person. Of course, that's the other bit. A letter got sent to him. I think someone put it in those kind of weird um, cut up letter thing, you know, calling him a fag, calling him, you know, a nigger. You know, the standard kind of nonsense people send. It continues here. It says, Smollett testifies his face was very important, that he looked like a black Gary Grant testifies computers were used to remove face cars what who's gary grant and why does he think he looks like him who's this gary grant guy gary grant come on oh this fucking computer is going to be the death of me who the hell is gary grant can we see who gary grant is please let's see i'm going to highlight this search it on google and see who gary see who this guy or see who because hollywood does this to a lot right when you're coming up new they'll tell you you're this person you're the next this you're the next that um but you're not right you're just about you oh my god come on this guy looks nothing like gary grant what the fuck is this <laughs> whoa he looks absolutely nothing like this don nothing like him whatsoever this dude's smoldering super handsome he's probably the kind of guy in the movies in the 70s or the 60s would slap a woman if she spoke out of line right looks nothing like him whatsoever God almighty, man, division. But it's also, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredibly gay reference too. That he even knows who this guy is, right? And that he used him as a muse to kind of build upon his, his own career. That shows you that that's a very, very gay reference. Like, what? Gary Grant? What are you talking about, Mike G? Let's continue. Um, Smollett testifies it became a running joke that, Bos that Bolo Osandario was his security when they'd go out. Defense urges brothers wanted to scare Jussie into hiring him as security. Oh, Jesus Christ. 
Come on. So Smollett testifies he did not want Empire security because he liked to drive his own car and smoke my blunt in my car on my lunch. Oh, just such a nigger vibe, innit? Um, Justice Smollett said, under oath, there was no hoax. He maintained. Smollett says he was driving, smoking a blunt and texting with a woman about MSBC appearances the day of January 27th when the Bolisandarios were in his car. The brothers say that there was a hoax and he was being planned. So he's basically saying that he was driving him around just as a boy, doing the ting, passing blunts around, you know, jacking each other off, doing bumps and shit. Whereas they are saying that that run or that drive was a dry run for the actual hoax, that they were driving around the area, they were still kind of casing, <laughs> casing out the subway, telling him, you know, what, what, where they were going to hit him, where they were going to pick him up, all that sort of stuff. But he's saying, no, 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 we were jacking each other off, you know what I mean? That's what the boys do in the car. <laughs> Just as Smollett testifies that Bola Osandario called him the night of the attack to talk about Smollett's training and meal plan. Smollett says to Bola told him he had to eat four eggs. So Smollett talks about going to walk to get eggs. Yo, this case is wild. Who do you believe? Do you believe, right, that the call was about talking about the hoax or talking about the, you know, alleged hate crime? Or do you believe the call in the middle of the night was to remind my man to go buy four eggs? Somebody's lying there. Somebody had a boner when they were... Do you think both of these guys didn't have boners when they were calling each other? Do you think they both weren't pleasuring yourself when they were calling each other over the phone? Do you think they'll just go off the phone and say, yeah, brother, just get the, get the four eggs, try and buy the one with six in it so you can have a couple of more for the next day? Come on, bruv. What, what, are, they, what are they doing here? So when it testifies... Um, sorry, da 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 uh, Smollett testifies that it felt like Looney Tunes when he was attacked. Somebody massive came up to me, not even time to think. Oh yeah, that's why he's saying that how he didn't, he couldn't see who it was because they were completely masked up. I don't know about you, right? I don't know about you guys, but I have a feeling <clears throat> if I was <clears throat> if I was getting beaten up by somebody in the street and it happened, it happened, it had a banner clover and they covered up as much as they can on their body, I would still have a sense of what race they were just based off how they moved or some sounds they made. I don't know, maybe because I'm from the hood and I've grown up around stuff and I've had to keep my head in the swivel and I had to be street smart. But I just have a genuine feeling that I'll be able to tell if the kid was Somali, if he was Polish, right? Romanian, Caribbean, Jamaican, Trinidadian. I'll be able to tell. I swear, I swear down. I'll be able to tell. I don't know about you, but I would, I would tell. I would be able to tell. As I'm fighting for my life, right? Trying to avoid my stab wounds. I'll be able to tell. I swear my life I would. I swear it. Maybe I'm maybe I'm going over the top, but I swear I would. It continues. It says, um, Smollett testifies if I lean to says, because I was getting my ass whooped, Smollett response when asked why he didn't initially realize this around his neck. <laughs> he was getting beaten so bad he didn't realize someone putting a noose around his neck. Continues. He says, I'm a black man in America. I do not trust the police. Smollett under oath said, Ah, that's the same thing Megan Thee Stallion said, isn't it? Why didn't you call the police? Oh, because he's a black man. I didn't want to get him in trouble. And then the next day, you shot me, Tori, you shot me. You got to pick your lane. Either you're the victim or you're, at, or you're the freedom fighter, but you can't be both. Let's, let, let's pick one. Um, Smollett's manager, Frank Granson, did call the police. Uh, Smollett testifies under oath. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, so that's a weird thing, isn't it? So he got beaten up. He got put a noose around his neck, which, again, if that did happen, that's incredibly degrading. He takes it off. Then he goes back to his hotel room. And he manages to put it back on again so the police can see it. <laughs> they, oh, again, <clears throat> one thing I've discovered about this stuff, being famous sucks because the things you have to do, the things you have to think about when you're famous or you're an entertainer is so disgusting. In the moment of need, in the moment you're feeling vulnerable, you're feeling violated, you're feeling humiliated, you have to think about how it looks to the media, how it looks to the police, how it looks to the wider public. That's what you have to think about. You have to already get your response in hand, what you're going to tweet out, where you're going to go and talk. It's just like exhausting. You can't even sit down and collect your thoughts. You just got your ass handed to you. You got guys shouting fag, calling you MAGA, saying MAGA country, saying get out of my country N-word. All this mad stuff they're saying to you. You can't even have a chance to kind of collect yourself and just think, oh my God, what the hell is happening? You have to already think about the next steps. Put the noose over your neck. Put this, I said, oh yeah, yeah. Being famous sucks so bad. It continues, it says, um, uh, Smollett testified during the investigation that he got a text from Don Lemon. Oh, Don Lemon's involved the two, saying the CPD didn't believe him. Chicago Police Department, okay. Um, Smollett on Chicago. Oh, is, is Don Lemon from there? Or did he, how did he know that? Interesting. So they didn't believe him from the start, I guess it was. Which I guess makes sense, right? Because if you, again, it, it, in a state like Chicago, a lot of violence happens there, right? So I'm pretty sure those police officers on the beat are able to ascertain 
the validity of people's claims pretty quickly in an in, in a kind of you know whatever happened domestic dispute they're able to kind of figure out who's the aggressor who isn't yeah you know i mean quite quick because there's so many case studies you have to kind of come across on a daily basis so it wouldn't surprise me if they thought you know what there's something fishy about this shit from the onset it continues it said um smollett testified he turned down alicia key's invite to get on stage during grammys because he wanted to get up there as a singer not as a singer that would beat up come on just you know more likely than not unless he's found completely innocent of all charges he's never going to be on a grammy stage again anyway in his career he should have taken that chance i never understand these people who run towards victimhood and when they get given all the treats and the rewards of victimhood they didn't try and turn it away like they tr tr try and be like moral, ethical people like, no, I've, you know, I stand for more than that. No, you don't. You've decided to be the victim. Ride that baby until the cow come home. Ride that horse into the sunset as Megan Thee Stallion did. She decided to be a victim. She got Grammys. She didn't deserve. She got free Grammys. I was like, come on, man. Megan Thee Stallion is an all right artist, but does she deserve free Grammys? Let's be real. Right, makes mediocre music. Performances are pretty dead. Just looks great in pictures for the most part. But she ride that thing to the cows come home. So even if she does get found out that she did lie about Tory, so what? She's packed in her money. She's got her accolades, and she could still run back to the victimhood stuff and say, "Oh yeah, it's half of black women out here." Blah 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 blah. I don't know why he was doing this. That whole stance. He should have just taken the the gig at the Grammys and used it as another thing to kind of you know launch himself and kind of give some money in his pocket or whatever it may be. <clears throat> He continues here, says, um, Smollett under oath says, I have a scar under my eye that was not healed. My injuries were real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Special prosecutor, so Smollett says, do you recall the Northwest doctor? Was that witness actually called by your attorney? And your doctor said, no injuries. <laughs> he said, yeah, I remember him saying the facial injuries were real. So he's disputing it. The doctor said his injuries weren't real or they weren't as aggressive or as, you know, crazy as making it seem, which makes sense as well. If I've just, if, if I've been to a bathhouse with you, you know, we've been doing bumps of coke, we've been smoking weed, been jacking each other off it's very difficult for me to then get up the rage needed to really bang you up even if it is for a hoax that's going to probably make us both rich it's going to be hard for me to really let loose on you because we were boys man we just jacked each other off the other day we jacked each other off we did a couple of bumps we smoked some weed we watched some gay porn and some bathhouse thing it's going to be difficult for me to come in and start beating you it's going to be hard because there's love there, you know what I mean? So it's no surprise that his injuries weren't as extensive as you probably hope it would be. You probably hope to have that big black eye, look like he'd been in a fight with Francis and Ghana, right? Looking at those guys, that's what he wanted. But instead, he looked like he just got in a bit of a tussle in, in a flipping Black Friday sale. That's not enough for you to kind of say, you are the black Tupac. I'm sorry, you're the gay Tupac, sorry. Oh, what a legend. Judge Smollett is rescheduled to retake the stand. Uh, there, let's continue on, and I'll end it. So he said, yeah, uh... What else it said here? I want to end it quickly here. Yeah, this is a funny bit. Smollett interrupts Special Prosecutor Dan Webb as Webb was reading out loud Smollett's messages that had the N-word in it. So she's reading his texts, I guess, back and forth to the guys, to the brothers or whatever, just his texts in general. And he said the following. Smollett said, can you spell or say the N-word out respect for my, every African-American in this room? You've been saying that word a lot. Webb says, I don't intend to, to, I don't intend to do that sort of you can read your messages aloud. Smollett then reads his own messages. <laughs> so if anything, right, this should be a great example of the grandstanding and the ego that exists when you're a Hollywood entertainer, man. Like, like his life is on the line, literally. His career is on the line, literally. But still, he feels the need to aggrandize, to grandstand, to morale, to, to flipping virtue signal that this lady or this prosecutor shouldn't be saying the N-word because it's written in the text, because you're offending the years and decades of my answers. Like, shut up, bruv. You're fighting for your life right now. No one cares about your politics and your, you know, woke ideals. No one cares about it right now. We're trying to ascertain as to whether or not this thing was real or it wasn't. And I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just in the minority. I'm going to end it there until reading the, the, the notes. I generally think he's saying the truth. I don't know why. A part of me thinks... It actually did happen where he says it happened. And if that is the case, whew, he will not shut the fuck up if, it does, if that is the case. He won't shut the fuck up. He will not let us rest if it's, if it's kind of revealed that he actually was a victim of a hate crime. And the Olsen Dario brothers, because what he's basically alleging is that he hired them to be his trainers. Then somehow within that time, they go into a disagreement and then they decided to do that whole jumping thing with the MAGA hats to kind of get back on him because, I don't know, whatever disagreement they fell out with on money. But then he, on his head, thought it was a real attack because he didn't know it was them because their banner clavered up and covered every part of their body. But again, 
who knows? Who knows if it was true? Who knows what's true? You know, it would also be funny. If there was actually was these white supremacist attackers, they did exist. They found them later on down the line. Like, they did exist. It wasn't actually the Boston Road brothers or somebody else, but that, is, that isn't going to be the case because we already, we already see footage of them buying a noose, you know, whatever, ordering a hat off, flipping Amazon. Do you remember when that hat was so toxic? That hat really made people upset. Now you wear that hat, it's, bit, it's a bit of a LOL, but do you remember that hat was a big deal if you wore that Make, and make, a great, make America Great Again hat? That was a really big deal. Like you were basically signaling that you were a racist and a homophobe or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just a hat. Hey, Donald Trump's presidency was the most divisive presidency of all time, isn't it? Really, really was. But things haven't even got better, really, it looks like in America, to be honest. But again, no politics talk. Let's end it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think Justice Smollett is innocent? Yes or no? Is he telling the truth? Yes or no? Or do you have any alternative theories too? I want to hear those. Any alternative theories that haven't really made the mainstream? Let me know. I'd love to hear them, man. I really, really would.